Hey friends, the holidays are right around the corner and I usually spend my free time crafting. Today I'm going to show you how you can make these cute houses with printable templates. So let's get into it. Here's all the tools I'm using for this project. I'll also have them linked below in the description. Here's how the templates look when they're printed out. I have these available right now in my web shop and you can print them out on your normal at home printer. Here I have them printed out on A4 paper, but they're scalable, so they work on any sized paper. You want to cut them out on the solid line. First, you want to prepare a slab. I typically go for half centimeter slab thicknesses, but in this project, I prefer to use a full centimeter. I made a couple samples to start with, and the full centimeter just felt more solid and comfy at this scale. Don't forget to compress your clay with a rib after rolling it out. This will help later with warping and remove the texture from the canvas. Then I transferred the slabs to a board lined with newspaper. For this project, I recommend letting your slabs harden a little bit. This will make it easier to cut and assemble them with clean edges and lines. However, if you don't have time or you don't mind a little wonkiness, you can skip this step. The climate now in my basement is cold and wet, so I let them dry overnight. But keep in mind that this might take only an hour or two in your space, depending on the climate in your area. You want your slabs to look like this. See how they bend a little, but they're not floppy. Then you can cut out your pieces. You want to cut out two of each template. I like to use a ruler when I'm cutting them out to keep my lines straight. And I'm also cutting with an X-Acto knife. Once the pieces are cut out, follow the instructions on the templates to prepare the pieces for assembly. The corners of the house need to be cut at approximately 45 degrees and scored. I don't worry about getting them exactly at 45 degrees, as the clay can still be squished a little. So I don't use any tool here to measure the angle, but I just eyeball it. A scoring tool is great for roughing up the edges, but if you don't have one, you can also use a serrated rib or a needle tool. For the C template, which is the roof, you want to be careful that you have it the right way up as it is a rectangle, but it almost looks like a square. So it's easy to get the sides mixed up. Also, you want to score the roof slightly away from the edge as the template indicates. This is because the roof hangs over a little bit, which you will see shortly when we are assembling. Now that our pieces are prepared, it's time to start assembling. You want to assemble the body first before the roof. I'm just using water here, but depending on your clay, you might want to use slip. Try to attach the pieces together at right angles and apply soft but firm pressure. It might get a little messy here as the slip squeezes out. That's a good thing. You can clean it up later with your finger or a paintbrush. Once the body is assembled, you want to do some additional scoring on the edges of the walls where they will attach to the roof. To get the roof to sit flat, you might also need to cut off the corner of the shorter wall, as I'm doing here. This will depend on the thickness of your clay, so I recommend checking first before you attach them. Now that your house is assembled, you want to add your details. 
here the options are endless. You can shape, stamp, carve, or cut. Here I'm using my throwing knife to create a shingles pattern. On this one, I carved out lines using a trimming tool. You can also add pieces like a tiny wreath or some bushes out front. It's really endless. You want to cut out enough windows and holes to let light out, but leave enough walls so that the light can bounce around a little bit on the inside and you don't see the candle directly. If you want. I mean, do what you want. With any pot that I'm attaching pieces together, I like to wrap them in plastic for 24 hours before letting them dry out. I find that this helps a lot with avoiding cracks. Then, once the pot is fully dried out, you want to finish it according to your clay's instructions. I'm using stoneware clay here, so I'm going to bisque it and apply a glaze. I know that some of you watching are using air dry clay, and this project will absolutely work for that, but I'm not sure that you're going to be able to put a candle in it. You want to check what it says on your clay packaging, and don't be afraid to reach out to the manufacturer to make sure. You don't want to expose it to a flame unless you're absolutely sure that it's not going to throw off any dangerous fumes. If you're glazing, I recommend a light color, on the inside at least, which will help bounce the light around. But do whatever you want, and don't be afraid to experiment. I think these houses are so cute and I think next I'm going to play with the scale of the templates so that I can make a little village out of different sized houses. I think these will look so cute on a mantelpiece or a bookshelf as holiday decor or honestly any time of the year. I hope that this video was helpful for you and all purchases from now until Christmas will go straight to Stray Aid Montenegro which is an amazing volunteer-run organization that protects and finds homes for stray dogs and cats in Montenegro which has a pretty bad stray animal problem. They bring dogs all over Europe and they're the shelter that brought our sweet peanut to us. Happy holidays, everyone. I hope that you're finding warmth and peace with whatever family of your choosing. I will be back next week with another cozy tutorial. See you then. Bye, friends.